Welcome to the Mighty Dragon. Today I'm continuing my Mind Hunter special and I'm honoured to have actor Happy Anderson with me today. Hello, Mr. Anderson. Hello. Hello I can call you Happy. How are you today? <laughs> I'm okay. Good? good to see you. Yes, good to see you too. And you're my first crook on the Mind Hunter season. Oh. I'm doing. But I'm so excited to have my first crook on there. I've had loads of cops, but now I need some crooks. So we're getting into the juicy, the juicy characters. You know, ca I'm... Calling Jerry Brudos a crook is quite generous. Yeah, no, <laughs> he was so much worse, wasn't he? <laughs> obviously, we're going to be talking about Mind Hunter. Obviously, I just wanted to wind it back a bit and start. You know, where when did it all start for you? When did you have a love of acting? Uh, that, yeah, that's a great question. I, I don't remember a time when I didn't want to be an actor. Uh, and pretty much uh, from, my, from my earliest memory, it's what I wanted to do. So yeah. um, I pursued it from the time I was a kid. And then uh, I, I started doing like, you know, professional theater in high school. And then I went to college and graduate school, studied, studied acting at both places. And then it's been slow going, but, you know, eventually I, I, I carved a niche for myself and have had a pretty decent career yeah so it was always with you it seems from yeah I think so I mean I always wanted to be on stage that was for sure I started off as a tap dancer actually when I was a young really? boy yeah yeah tappy happy still... they called me <laughs> and do you still have a little tap now and again or no <laughs> uh, I can. I, I, I mean, like, you, you know, you saw Mindhunter. I'm a quite a large man, so it, it does. I'm not really called to dance very much. OK, oh, I, I was super interested, actually, in your IMDb history, and I saw that you've done quite a few video games and um, voiced quite a few of those. Is that something you love to do is uh, voicing video games? <laughs> You know, I, I get this question a lot, and I mean, the honest answer is and, and not really. I mean, I, it's fine. I like it, but I've never been a gamer. I've never been into video ah, games. And as a matter of, you know, these are just uh, jobs that I randomly get offered, and most of the time, actually, I think every time I've done one, I didn't. They didn't even tell me what game it was. Okay. And, so I didn't even know, I didn't even really know what I was doing. They'd give me a script, I'd go into a booth and shout obscenities at the screen. And, um, <laughs> and, and, and if they had told me, it wouldn't have made a difference. I, the only one I'd ever heard of before was Grand Theft Audio. Uh, and that was, uh, you know, cause my, my nephew, as my nephews call it GT5. So I knew about that one, but uh, yeah. the other ones I never even heard of. I haven't uh, played uh, video games really since the, the Nintendo 64 came out when I was in sixth grade. Fantastic. <laughs> so I bet your nephew was like super proud. That oh his my God. They, 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 <laughs> they, 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 couldn't, uh, they couldn't get enough of it. They tell everybody. <laughs> oh, fantastic. So from your screen acting and Broadway, what interests you in a character to want to portray them? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think the the biggest the challenge that i get the most excited by is finding a way to empathize with a character who's been very terrible i mean yeah. you know I, I i tend to play a lot of those <laughs> kind of people that hurt people which which i, I you know that does get a little tiresome and, and, and stuff but they're some of the best written characters um yeah. and and so i'm drawn to the complexity of you know because a lot of people just aren't all evil. A, a lot of hateful people can also be very generous and very loving and care deeply about some people. I mean, even Jerry Brudos was clearly very much in love with his wife and children. Yeah. But he, but he also was psychotic and horrible and a monster. And both things, you know, you have to find a way for both things to coexist. I think it's really interesting, his story, I know we're going to get onto it, about how he was a family man and a serial killer, and there was yeah. a very clear distinction between the two. Um, with Mindhunter, as we just talking about it, um, it was a huge, huge success, and there's rumours that there's going to be another season. In your opinion, what was behind the success of this series? Well, I think... Uh... I mean, in, in a word, the writing, you know, I mean, it was it was so realistically written and the people, aside from being based on real people, the, the people felt fleshed out. And, and, I, and I just think the brutal honesty with which the story's told. I remember when I was first offered it and I didn't really know much about it. And uh, 
and I was reading it. And I remember my first thought was, who's going to watch this? Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, 13 <laughs> pages of two guys sitting down talking, you know, no one gets uh-huh. shot, nothing explodes. I'm like, no one's going to like it. And then when we were working on it, I was like, oh, I hope people watch it because I think it's going to be really, really great. And then it turned out there was very much an audience for it. And I, and I, I think as a society and a culture, we're pretty fascinated by serial killers and uh and and mindhunter does a great job i think of like delving into every little nook and cranny of these people so you don't you don't you hate them but you don't just hate them you find them funny and charming and you sometimes feel bad for them and and i think that's that's the best kind of drama you can ask for i think absolutely and as you said earlier you played jerry brudos how much prep and research did you do behind that character yeah, um, I did some. I, there was a great book written about him uh, by this woman, Anne Rule. It's called The Lust Killer. Uh, Anne which Rule, was, okay. Which, which was yeah. a huge eye-opener. I mean, it really, really helped open up a lot. Of, I was stuck at for How I usually work is I, I, I learn the part first, and then I decide what kind of prep it calls for after yeah. I've learned all the scenes. Um, and, I, and, and because I don't always research, uh, cause sometimes you can overkill it and bog it down into too much detail when it's just a straightforward, uh, deal. Um, but I was, I thought, oh, well, I'm going to need some help with this. And, uh, so that book was actually recommended to me by the costume designer of Mindhunter. And, uh, so I read that, that provided a lot of insight into his state of mind and his upbringing and, and where the trauma started for him and he sort of split off and created another person basically and uh and a simple google search you know i I couldn't find a whole lot of uh video of him uh i found this one really brief clip where he says something that i can't understand and and then he cracks himself up and i thought oh well that's interesting so i i I, that's why i started that first scene with all that laughter i was like maybe that when he, he where most people would feel uncomfortable, maybe in lieu of feeling uncomfortable, he just makes himself laugh. He just finds everything funny. Yeah, I see. Um, what was most important to you about portraying that character? As it, was there a certain element? I know you just said about his humor. Do you have to uh, find that you have to be very sensitive about it? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think so. I mean, I think it's important you know, it's it's like the, the the only kind of characters I've ever turned down that I will not play are uh, child molesters, and that is primarily right. because, um, you know, that was primarily because I think it's the the actor's duty and the actor's job to empathize with whom they're playing. Otherwise, they're just playing a a, a caricature or or some ridiculous yeah. cartoon. Um, and yeah. I have no interest in even trying to <laughs> empathize with right. people who do that. And I'm glad there yes. are really good actors that do you know, because these are important mm. stories and they need to be told. They just aren't going to be told by me. Um, Got you. And, uh, and so that, like, that's, that was the biggest uh, challenge or the most important thing, I think, was, you know, I kind of keyed into his, uh, I alluded to it earlier, his childhood trauma, because that's, that tends to be a fork in the road for a lot of people. Um, and every child experiences some form of trauma, whether it's mild or ex- to the extreme, as in this case. But it, yeah. it foretells sort of what kind of person they're going to become. And, uh, yeah. and when, when someone like has a, like a really disgusting, overbearing, sort of emotionally incestuous mother, um, yeah. they can go in a lot of different ways. And they usually, even if it goes badly, it usually doesn't go that badly. So I, I, I assume he probably uh, had some screw, screws loose as well. But, um, you know, it felt like everything is a revenge fantasy for him and, right. uh, against his mother. And... Uh, so I was just trying to, I, I think empathy, you know, showing the empathy for, because he's a victim too, even though he's a monster. Yeah. And he has many, but he, he was a victim first before he was a killer. Yeah. And when you um, play a character like this, do you feel very emotionally drained afterwards or charged? How, is it, or is it just another job? That's a, that's a, that's a great question. And actually it, it, this job was unique in that way because I usually don't, feel anything i mean i'm usually oh it's over okay let's see what the next one hopefully there's a next one soon you know whatever and i was yeah. expecting to have the same reaction in this case and uh, you know i gotta be honest i got home and i was very depressed for wow. several days yeah. and uh and anxious I, I i sort of developed this anxiety around it and uh, 
I just had a really tough time uh, and, and it, and it made even tougher because I so didn't expect it. I'm, I'm usually not that kind of actor. I leave, I leave work at work, but you know, yeah. and, and Fincher is a brilliant guy, but he, and he really pushes you to go further and further and further. So I didn't realize, I guess, while I was in it, how deep, deep I was going, you know, and it didn't right. hit me until the job was over. Wow, that's amazing. I'm so glad I asked you that question. As I was reading about Brudos before this interview, I was just thinking, like, how can you portray someone like that and just be like, right, that's the job done for today, you know, <laughs> and kind of go home for your dinner or something, you know. But it, I found that, like, wow, you know, I'm so glad I asked you that. Um, are there any special behind the scenes memories of Mindhunter that you can share with us? Well, the, the, the one that uh, jumps out is kind of the, one of the funniest things that happened is, so you know that uh, there's, a, there's the second scene in episode seven, where at the end, I sort of make love to the, <laughs> to the high heel pump. Um, <laughs> and that thing, that scene was entirely reshot like three weeks later. And in the first version, uh, they showed that part from the front which was uh, a, a little traumatic in and of itself. But um, the funny thing was, is, it, it, you know, you're so like a day at a time, a moment at the time, in a, in, 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 at a time in a project like that. So you don't really think too far down the road. But I went into my trailer uh, one day as that scene was coming up and there was a tray, just a huge tray of fake penises. And I was like, <laughs> oh my, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and, uh, and I took a picture on my phone and I texted it to my wife and I just, and I just wrote, which one question mark. And that was all I said. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> superb. Superb. Oh my gosh. And what did she say? She wrote this? <laughs> the biggest. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> oh, the, also, I just wanted to ask you, um, Bad Boys for Life, The Nick, Bird Box, what's been your favorite role from your career so far? Oh, well, yeah, those, those, those were all incredibly yeah. fun, fun jobs. Um, uh, uh, you know, and, and picking a favorite role, as odd as it sounds, sort of feels like picking a favorite child. It's it's hard to yeah. it's hard to do. They all mean something. <laughs> they all mean a lot to you in different ways. Um, but there's three um, smaller projects that stand out that very few people saw that I'm very very proud of. Are there was this old Cinemax series called Quarry where I played a, a detective in that. Um, there's an independent film called The Standoff at Sparrow Creek, which is about this you know, right-wing militia uh, who, who uh, you know, it just it humanizes them in a way that I, I hadn't yet. And, yeah. uh, and another uh, smaller independent film called Hitmen, which is about this, uh, which that character is really in kind of my wheelhouse. It's, you know, this kind of beaten down, alcoholic, um, struggling, great, great songwriter who's hired by like a Miley Cyrus type character to write a hit song for her, even though he hates her and everything she stands for, he needs the money. <laughs> So uh, I need so, to see this. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's on Amazon Prime, I believe. Yeah. Oh, I will definitely watch that. I'll definitely watch it and review it on on the blog. I'll tag you. Perfect. In. <laughs> what do you have coming up now that we're coming out of lockdown? What have you got coming up? Uh, oh, I worked on two things uh, during the pandemic. Um, I worked on a, a series uh, called "Bring On the Dancing Horses" with Kate Bosworth and Michael Polish. Um, wow. which looks like it'll be a lot of fun. I'm not sure yeah. when that's coming out. And uh, I was in a, a podcast series, um, which it was sort of odd. I found myself in that project. Like the singer Kesha is in it and this other pop star um, named Chloe. Yeah. Uh, uh, and that's, it's really good. It's really well written. Um, and it'll okay. come out late summer. Oh, great. Looking forward to that. I just wanted to thank you for joining me on here today. And thank you my for pleasure. being my first crook. I'm so pleased to <laughs> have got you on here. Thank you so much for sharing your experience on Mindhunter and your career too. All the best for the rest of the year. Thank you, Happy. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Bye. Thanks to Happy Anderson for this interview. And see you soon on The Mighty Dragon.